I'm pleased to present the new BlueView Mark II uh, product range. This is the Mark II series of the M series. Okay, so now I've double clicked on the ProView uh, uh, app and it's opened. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to connect to the sonar and ProViewer will search for the sonar on the network and you can see here the sonar has come up and the sonar head is here in the M2250 45 degree view. I'm going to push connect and it'll connect to the sonar. You can see now that we've started up in the high frequency 2 megahertz mode. Um, the quick way of changing here is you can just flip between the heads. That's one of the new features in ProViewer that it's really uh, easy to flip between the heads here. You can also see the drop down of the different heads that are available. So I'm going to start in the M900 and I'm just going to walk through some of the really simple features. What I like about the ProViewer um, software is that it's super easy to use. Uh, you really don't have to have any special training or anything like that. I, uh, I myself have just started using it when I um, started using the product for the first time. Um, some of the really uh, neat features are things like measurements. You can see here, you can measure if you saw an object that you wanted to measure, like the length of this key wall here that we're uh, side at here, you can see the length of it roughly. Um, one can also zoom on an area by clicking. I can, so it's right mouse button to click out, left mouse button to click in. If you've got a trackball, you can also track in and out uh, on different areas. You can see how it centralizes. And if I go out and the, the display is off center, then it's, uh, I just stop the zoom and uh, I can move the display around. So super intuitive. Um, you can also see here, um, take a snapshot. So then you actually record a, an image snapshot to some location on your computer on the network. You can also take a video recording. So obviously this is a solar that's used for imaging purposes. So very often you're recording video imagery as some kind of documentation of what you've uh, wanted to see. And I'm just gonna stop that. And then of course you can always record data and in, in here you're recording a SON file. And when one records a SON file, you can see here on the top right of the screen, you can see your recording and you can see how much space you're using uh, on the file size right here. So now you're actually recording real sonar data, and it also means that you can go back and adjust the settings afterwards, um, some intensity settings or some sound velocity settings, because it's recording the, essentially the raw sonar data. So I'm gonna stop recording because there's no need for us to record all the time. And you can see here, it just uh, pops up, give me a warning. Um, some of the other more advanced features I'm just gonna show here. Um, would be things you'd look at when you first start using the sonar. Generally speaking, you don't need to adjust the speed of sound to a very accurate level. So this was a this was a, a left, sorry a right click on the um, display here. Anywhere on the display here, you right click, you'll get an advanced uh, menu, and you can see here that you can adjust the speed of sound. When you adjust it, what you're doing is you're changing the the input to the beam forming so you're changing the geometry you can see here and if you push it too far then then it doesn't uh, work out too well so generally you want to get it roughly in the range and you can estimate it quite nicely with the temperature of the water if you know your your water quite well so we're at about 1495 today so that that should be good enough you can also change the color map so very common uh, is copper a lot of other people like the jet so it really depends on what you're trying to trying to do. This highlights uh, high level signals quite nicely. <clears throat> um, there are a few other different scales. This is another sort of traditional gray scale from the sonar. Um, if I go back to the copper, which is my personal favorite, then you also see here that we're running auto intensity. Auto intensity is a really nice feature of the BlueView because it means you don't have to be a sonar expert. You can trust the sonar will get a pretty good setting um, just using its auto intensity algorithm. But if you want to do some tuning and you're a more advanced user, you can take the auto intensity off. And here you see you can change some of the intensity of the screen. Uh, so if I, if I blast it up too much, then you'll see a lot of highlights and you'll be losing some of the, the finer detail in the background. If you turn the intensity down a bit, then you'll see that you lose some highlights. And you've got some, you've got some gain settings and some other things you can fiddle with in other parts of the sonar that I'll come to shortly. So I'm gonna go back to auto intensity, just for the sake of simplicity here. 
and then I'm going to go in and look at some of the more advanced settings here in the settings win window at the top here. Um, you can see here you've got uh, units, so you can change your units to meters or feet. So I'm just going to jump into feet over here, and here you see it changes on the range scale on the far left hand side. Um, what else can I show here as well? Also, of course, as you can see here, there's latitude and longitude, so one can actually interface a GPS. So we don't have a GPS interface right now, but it's very practical. You can take in a GPS string and have that recorded in the SON file, so then you can locate where your, your, your data is uh, after doing a, a survey or an inspection. Uh, you can also see some more advanced sonar settings here with IP setup as well as with uh, control of the pan and tilt. So if you've got a pan and tilt on the side of the, um, on the, side of the vessel, then, uh, then it's possible to control that as well. So now I'm going to show the range control. So on the top left hand side, you can see this, this ball that you can drag around and you can use that to decrease the range of the sonar. I can see that it's in feet now. I'm, uh, I think, more in meters myself, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to change the range scale from feet to meters. You can see the, the range scale changes back again to, to feet, to, to, sorry, to meters here. And we're moving quite fast in the harbor here, so we're, uh, the data's a bit noisy. You can see the key side in the distance here, quite a sharp and strong return. You can see another key side over here. So an example that we could be using the sonar for, we could be using it for doing some uh, post-disaster inspection. There's been some kind of uh, natural disaster, looking for downed objects, looking for um, social recovery, or any, um, any debris that might be in the channel or in a harbor area. As we're moving along here, we're getting close to some features. You can see the side of the wall here, and we'll later in this demo, we'll do a, an inspection where we tilt the sonar sideways. So right now we've got the sonar mounted in the horizontal orientation. So you can see there's a wide 130 degree field of view on the 900 kilohertz. Right over here, we're approaching the underside of a vessel. So you can see some kind of structure over here. So here we see that we're tracking along, uh, looking for objects in the seabed. Because I'm trying to find something uh, relatively small, I'll be decreasing my range scale, maybe losing a little bit of range, but prioritizing getting more pixels on these smaller objects. So here we see tires on the seabed. Look at that, that's a nice tire. So here we see some nice objects on the seabed. There's a lot of tires on the seabed in this area, so you can kind of make out the, the round shapes. We've got the sonar on a bow mount. So here we see a round tire object. And here we see a, the key wall and debris at the bottom. So what you'd be using the sonar for would be as a general area inspection. Here you see some more tires and it's really the eyes below the water. Uh, looking out the window, you can't really see what's below. But uh, with the sonar, you get a good impression of uh, where objects are. And if you're looking for a dropped object, here you see a nice circular shape and it's undoubtedly a tire with a bit of shadow behind it. So I'm going to just zoom out a little bit and see what the what the sonar is looking like at the longer range. So you can see here now you can clearly see that that tire shape close out and the sonar is giving pretty good pretty good data returns all the way out to 50 meters or more actually which is really impressive for such a high frequency sonar but of course as you go further out you can't see a lot of detail further some of the geometry of the area and the depth limit which one can see so i'm going to just pull it back in again because for the setup we've got now with the mount that we have and the depth and the tilt angle that we chose we chose a, a about a minus five degree tilt we could have gone a little bit more maybe mm. but it's generally a, a good compromise for the water depth we're in here in this harbor area and here you can see the uh, the metal sheet uh, sort of uh, cladding on the side of the key side here so really this is the purpose of what you use the sonar for. You use it to look for any anomalies or anything that you think are, is you know, not meant to be there or irregular. It's not really a survey tool per se. It's really your eyes below the water. Um, what you do is you find an area that where you saw some damage or where you thought there was something that was worth doing a sort of a more uh, sort of quantitative survey because this is quite a qualitative impression of what one sees around. 
If you want to get a quantitative impression, then you drop the BB5000 in uh, into the water and do a scan of the area and, and get some point clouds or of the structures or of the objects. We're having a look at an area with some tires and some debris on the seabed against the key wall here. And when I see some objects, I'm going to flip over to the uh, high frequency mode so we can see the detail of the objects. We're moving quite quickly, you can see the movement. But again, one of the cool features about the sonar like this is it's actually um, pretty immune to the, the motion of the vessel. Of course, it's difficult to follow the data sometimes but it's diff different to a scanning sonar where everything would be blurred if you, if you were scanning and trying to move at the same time. So you're seeing the full watercolor or the full swath uh, or the full viewing sector um, at the same time. And one thing that's interesting about the Smart 2 sonar is you'll see that we've got a 130 degree field of view on the 900 kilohertz. Here we go with some nice uh, tires here on the starboard side. I'm going to flip over to the high frequency mode. <clears throat> so there's another tire object, very nice tire object here. Almost dead ahead now. Really good detail. You can clearly see the circular shapes of the tires. And this is the strength of the two megahertz. Wow, that's really fantastic imagery there. You can see the key wall and the water depth must be only a few meters here. We've got the sonar tilted uh, minus 20 degrees. I'm going to just switch over between the 900 kilohertz. And now you can see some nice tire objects here. I'm going to zoom in on them. Just record this data. I'm going to zoom in. You can clearly see my shape, my shadow detail. My shadow detail over here on these objects. I'll zoom out again. I'll decrease the range scale so you can get a bit better resolution on those objects. You can see one, two, three tires at least with really good shadow on them. And then I'm just going to change over to the high frequency. First I'll save this data and then I'm going to change over to the high frequency two megahertz mode and those tires are outside of the field of view with the exception of this one over here. We're going to just move the vessel a little bit and as we go ahead, we'll probably see those tires coming into view soon. Here we go. You can see the first one there at just over eight meters range. And I'm just going to start recording there again. Really nice data. So very often with forward looking sonar, ones using shadow, shadow information or shadow detail. Here's another tire over here. Nice shadow behind it. And of course, it's possible to measure on these objects and get an impression of how big they are as we move along. Probably uh, truck tires or something similar. We're in the industrial harbor. I'm going to increase the range scale a bit. Start searching for some new objects. I'm just zooming in here with my mouse. Really easy to use the display, really intuitive. I'm not using the keyboard very much. I'm, I'm pretty much just uh, using the mouse. I'm gonna increase the range scale now. We're moving ahead. I'm gonna look for some other objects to, uh, to get some data on. I'll flip over now. You'll see what we've done is we've prioritized giving the best possible wide area coverage on the 900 kilohertz. And that's uh, meant that we've reduced the two megahertz. So now we can see the key wall over here. So I'll just show that what you can do easily. So here we've got a small object in front of us here. Some fish over here. You just saw them for a split second. We'll just go to the 900 kilohertz again. And we'll pick the fish up again. We see lots of tire objects around. Just to show you here, of course, now that we've been recording some data, I'll just record some data for a few seconds here. It's possible when stopping the recording, to go in and, and make your own file name over here. So we could call this tire data T and then record it just like that. Pretty simple. We 
can see some kind of object moving over here. Can you see that? It could be a fish in the shadow from a large fish. It's quite interesting, actually. Could also be our aspect angle changing to some object. So what we did is we um, we took the sonar and instead of having it in the usual 2D uh, forward-looking configuration in the horizontal orientation, we flipped the sonar because we've got it on a tilt offset. I can't offset it by exactly 90 degrees. I've got to offset it by a different angle. So I fiddled with it for a second and just got the angle right. Now I'm going to show you that I flipped the, the sonar and I put in the fixed angle and I'm entering minus 110 over here because that made the seabed uh, flat essentially out here roughly um, maybe I gotta flip it a little bit more and here as we go along the side of the key what we'll be able to see is we'll be able to see some key side scans so we're still a bit far away from the key side I'm gonna just start recording here so now we're doing inspection and inspection of the pilings can zoom a little bit more so if there was some damage or something like this uh, or something like that, then you would see some, you'd be able to see something visually. It's obviously a really efficient way of doing a scan of a large area. When we come pretty close, what I'll do is I'll flip over to the two megahertz so we can get an impression of what the data looks like there. I'll just save this data. And then I'm gonna flip over to the two megahertz and see if we get something decent there. That offset slightly different. Now you see we're coming in range here. Here's a seabed. This is really good inspection of the very sort of low foundation of the uh, seabed here, of the pilings here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly just set the sono so it looks a little bit more up. There we go. The seabed looks flat. This area here is pretty flat. I can do a little bit out, but it's not going to help very much. So when we're doing an inspection like this now, you can see that the piling is kind of straight and it goes all the way to the bottom. Of course, you'll have some silting near the, the bottom edge of a vertical structure like this. But I think generally speaking, we can see that this piling over here is in pretty good condition. Now, this is a well-maintained harbor. It's a rather large harbor, industrial harbor area. So we would also expect it to be in, in fairly good condition. Um, so what we see here is we see the nice, well-defined vertical structure of the, um, the harbor, sorry, the, uh, the jetty wall. What you'll see is that this uh, structure here is built up of vertical wood pilings backfilled with uh, small boulders, small to medium-sized boulders. And it's quite clear to see in the data here that you have these vertical wood structures and these boulders as well. So I think this is just a testament to the sonar and uh, the high resolution of this 2 megahertz, how, how uh, well it corresponds to what uh, the human eye can obviously see visually. And if I switch back to the 900 kilohertz, you can actually compare here with the 900 kilohertz that you can see structure, you can see the vertical areas, but the resolution is just not nearly as good as the 2 megahertz. So this really shows the strength of the 2 megahertz here. I'm going to show now, I'm going to just going to stop recording here, but if I take this um, 900 kilohertz data where it's pretty blurry and where the resolution, although one could say is good, it's not uh, phenomenal. If you go over to the two megahertz, one can see, once I just get it back into context view here, the resolution is far superior and the structures are far clearer to see. You can see the boulders and the boulder detail here as well. So that's really, really fantastic actually. So here we're coming in using the 900 kilohertz to approach the uh, side wall here. And we can see the metal cladded uh, key wall. Clearly see the uh, the, the striations or the, the pattern of the metal cladding. And it would be a great tool to see um, if there was any damage. Now, obviously there's no obvious damage here now, but quite, quite easy to see if there was damage or not. The range we're at now is around about 15 meters. So we're a bit too far away to use the, the two megahertz. But as soon as we come within that kind of range and get the grazing angle right, what we'll do is we'll flip over to the, um, the two megahertz 
So now we're within um, 10 meters range or so, and we're seeing nice vertical structures here. The metal clad uh, sidewall of the jetty here on the key side. We're gonna flip over to the two megahertz, and now we can see really nice detail, nice clear bottoms of this harbor is uh, very well maintained. We're not seeing a lot of damage or anything like that. The, the side wall is in really good condition. And looking out, I can see um, that there's no obstructions or anything like that. We're in a rather large vessel here, so it's a bit difficult to maneuver. If you were actually doing a survey like this, you would most likely be in a barge or something that was slow moving. You could rope yourself along the quay side. Here we see really great detail. So we're getting the, the uh, grazing angle really nice. But again, no obvious damage, no problems uh, with this part of the harbor. And pretty clear all the way down to the very bottom of the harbor wall. So actually really nice data. Thank you for listening to our video demonstration. We hope you enjoyed it. Our contact details follow shortly. Teledyne Marine. Everywhere you look.